Today, I'm going to show you a random function from the deplier package that will allow you to select a certain column of a CSV file, but at the same time as selecting it, we're going to change the name of that column. Now, the reason why you'd want to do something like that is let's say that it's not aesthetically pleasing to the eye or it's misleading and you want to create a good awesome report for management that doesn't really need to see like periods or underscores if you haven't installed deplier you would click on install and then make sure you're at the CRAN repository and just type in DPLYR deplier and then click on install I already have it installed on my machine so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that it might take a few minutes to install if you haven't downloaded all the dependencies. It'll do it all automatically, but it might take just a few minutes. So let that run, and once you're done, catch up and type in library, and let's load the deplier package. So that's loaded. I hit Control Enter so that it's loaded up in my RAM. Good to go. Now I want to I want to grab a file that I put in my project folder. The project folder is right here under files. So I have a project folder called select example, that's the directory, and my actual file is called demographic statistics by zip code. So that's the name of it. Let's take a quick peek at that. Let's load that in. So let's just do my data and we're going to assign that equal to read.csv and we're going to type in demographic. Typically you can type in part of it and hit tab and it'll fill in the rest if that file is within your project directory. So that was nice. I didn't have to type all that out even though it's in quotes. Pretty cool feature of our studio. We're going to do control enter on that and boom, you see in my global environment 236 observations of 46 variables. Let's take a quick peek. And as you can see, these names are all capitalized. They have the dot notation, so there's no spaces, which is generally good when you're dealing with computer type things. You don't want spaces. Typically, you want underscores or dashes or something like that. But we're going to send this to management, so we don't want to have, uh, for example, count dot female. We want a, a more aesthetically pleasing one. Let's call that number of females. We'll leave everything else the same. In fact, we're only going to select the first three uh, features. So let's go ahead and just let's print those out by doing names and type in my data. Simple as that. And you can see them populate down at the bottom console area. Now that it's there, let's change the name. Let's select just the first three. So we're just going to do my data and we're going to assign it my data, except for we're going to pipe the data into the deplier function first. So control shift M will add the percent greater than percent. If you don't know much about piping, you uh, might need to look up some of those things, but we're going to pipe my data into the select function. And what, we're, what are we going to select? We're going to select jurisdiction. So I'm going to start typing that in, hit tab, comma. I'm going to hit enter just for um, white space. We're going to use count dot participants comma and we're going to use count.female and again I'm just tabbing to autocomplete now we don't want percent female we're going to change that one we want it to be percent of females so I'm going to type in percent of females and I'm going to set it equal to that feature called percent dot female this won't quite work yet because now we have a problem we have spaces here we're going to enclose this with the back tick. The back tick is to the left of the number one. It is not a single quote. I repeat, it is not a single quote. It is a back tick. So let's put a back tick on each one. Sometimes our studio will try to autocomplete a back tick like this. You need to get rid of the uh, extra back tick. It needs to be just enclosed by one back tick each. Now, what it's going to do is when it pulls in percent.female, it's going to go ahead and reassign it to percent of females for us. Now this isn't a practical real world example, but you'll get the point across. So when I run this, what you're going to see is it's going to pull the first four features, but that fourth feature is going to say percent of females. And you can imagine changing up all of them to something aesthetically pleasing. Control enter and no errors, which is good. Let's go ahead and view my data in, in the viewer. Control enter. And here we go. You can see it's got jurisdiction.name, participants, female, and an aesthetically 
pleasing percent of females. Human readable. So that's the idea is you want to be able to change the name as you pull them in. Saves you a couple extra steps. It's not difficult, but it's just something that might help you out in the future. So new name equals old name. Done deal. That's the dplyr function. It's all part of the tidyverse. Welcome to the tidyverse. If you found this helpful or you want to add some comments or tell me how I did something wrong or less efficient than you, uh, go ahead and comment below. If you, if you want to find out more about these videos, uh, search around the site, check out some of the other videos. I have tutorials that are in sequence that will help you navigate, and I have random R and practical R type tutorials throughout this page. So give me a shout out, say hi below, and we'll see you on the next video.